Okay, in this video we're going to have a go at using Python and using the inputs on Python so it takes information from the user and puts it into the program. Now, we want to use the non-interactive window, so I'm going to go to New File. I'm going to save this as input. It's always useful if the file name matches what you're actually doing. Now, we're going to start with a variable, and the variable is going to be name, and we're going to say that it's an input which basically means that the user has a chance to input some information. Then we're going to ask a question which gets printed out. So we're going to say, what is your name? Put a space afterwards. Now, we can use a comment here to remind, me, remind ourselves later what this is. So we can say, name is an input which will be replaced by the user's name. This is less important on a short program like this, but quite important on a longer program, which I'm to remember why that variable was called that or how it's being used. Now, we can use the function print to output a result that makes use of this. So we can say, hello, close the speech marks, put a comma. Name isn't going into speech marks, and the reason for that is we want to print the output of name, not the actual word name put another comma and speech marks again and a space because name won't have a space after it so we need to put the space at the beginning of here it's really nice to meet you okay now if we run this the computer should then ask us to input our name and then it should output the message hello whatever name we put in here, and then it's really nice to meet you. So let's try this. Let's go run, run module, press OK. You'll see it comes up here, what's your name? Because we put a space after what is your name here, there's a space here. If we didn't put a space here, you'd find that our writing would go right against it. OK, so what is your name? I'm going to James, press Enter. And it now says, hello James, it's really nice to meet you. Now if there's too many spaces, it's very easy to adjust. We can just go back to here and we can change this. So for instance, we've got one space there before James. We've got one space after James there, so maybe we want to remove that one. Run it again. This time let's put a different name and see if we get different results. Let's say Sam. So it says, hello Sam, it's really nice to meet you. The key thing here is every time we run this, it's taking an input, in this case Sam, and it's storing Sam under the variable name. So every time we output name, it will be replaced with Sam, unless we get a new input that replaces that. And this can be really useful, and we can use it in a whole range of ways. So another way we could use this, just to show again, if I've got a new file, if I save this one as maths. We can use the same with maths. We can say um, number. Now, with numbers it's slightly different. They're integers. So we use number equals integer input. And this is where we have to watch brackets because I'm going to open two brackets here. So I have to close them. Um, say something like how old are you? Close the speech marks, close both brackets. Okay, and then we can say, much like before, print bracket speech marks. You are comma to separate the speech, it doesn't matter if you put a comma in for punctuation or not. Then we can put number, comma. Years old. Close the speech marks again. Now, if we run this, it again asks us the question How old are you? So I can put in 46. You are 46 years old. And now you can start to combine those two. So if we went back to the original program, we could say, What is your name? And then underneath that, we could say, Age, which is probably a better. Variable name for this, we'll say age equals again integer like the int input. How old are you? Close the 
brackets twice because we've opened them twice. We could put a comment here to say age is a variable which will be replaced by the user's age. We don't need a new print, we can actually add this in. So print hello name, it's really nice to meet you. I think you are comma age comma years old. Okay, and again if we run that, we should now get two questions. So the first one will say, what's your name? So we we'll put James again. How old are you? 46. Hello James, it's really nice to meet you. I think you're 46 years old. This becomes much more useful if we're doing something like a maths equation. We can ask them to actually put a number in. It can then carry out a calculation for us. We can also use it to make a story, which is something we're coming to very soon.